Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to grab a Raspberry Pi Pico W and use it to control this Zumo robot chassis via a web interface over Wi-Fi. So let's go and get started. Right. In this video, we're going to be using this Raspberry Pi Pico W microcontroller, which has got some header pins soldered onto it, as you can see. And we're going to be interfacing this to this piece of hardware, which is an L298N motor controller. And that's going to allow the Pico to control this, which is a Zumo robot chassis from Pololu. And if you've been watching this channel for some time, you may remember I've used this chassis before to build a robot controlled by a Raspberry Pi Zero. But uh, I've now stripped this down so we can start again and build a robot controlled by the Pico W. And very much, this is a project in two halves. One half concerns putting these three together and getting the Pico W controlling the robot. But the other half of the project concerns writing some code so we can control the Pico W via a web interface. And that is where we're going to start. Right, I've now got the Pico plugged into a breadboard to hold it down, and it's connected to a PC via USB. On the Pico, I've also installed MicroPython, as I detailed in my first Pico W video, and here on the PC, we're running the Thony Python integrated development environment. As you can see, I've written some code that serves a local web page to send commands to the Pico W. And note here I'm keeping things as simple as possible. I'm not using any special libraries, as my intention in this video is to demonstrate some basic principles. So let's take a look at the code. And as in my last Pico W video, I'd first note that this is based in part on code provided by the Raspberry Pi Foundation in an excellent getting started tutorial. We can see that on the web over here. Very, very useful documentation. And I will, of course, link to this in the video description. I'd also note that uh, back here in Thony, right now this code is saved on this PC, not on the Pico, although we'll be saving the code to auto run on the Pico later in the video. Anyway, if we look what we've got here, first of all, we've got commands to import various libraries we need in the code. And then after that, we're setting up two variables for the SSID, the name and the password for the Wi-Fi network we're connecting to. I know some people like to put these in a separate file, apparently to increase security. I don't personally understand that because if you store these details in a separate file stored in the same location as the code itself, and if somebody steals your Pico, they've got your details. If they don't steal your Pico, they haven't got your details. But if it makes you feel happier to put these in a separate file, put them in a separate file. After that, I've defined five functions to control the robot, as you can see, called a move forward, backward, stop, left, and right. And right now, all these do is to print words, which will appear in the shell down here when we run the code. But later in the video, we'll be replacing the print commands with commands to actually control the robot's motors. So let's move on down where we define some other functions. Here we've got one based on the Raspberry Pi Foundation's code to connect to the wireless network. And then after that, we've got a function to open a socket. And after that, we've got a function where we include some HTML, which will be served as our web page. And here, as you can see, I first of all defined a head just to tell the page what it's called, Zumo Robot Control. And then after that, there are five form buttons, as you'll see in a second. And basically, each of these buttons has got its own bit of code to set it up. The action here is to send out a particular piece of information here forward. And we've got a size set to these nice little square buttons. Some of the buttons are in a table, which was the quickest way to make them appear nice and straightforwardly. This code could probably be improved so we don't repeat the style thing all over the place, but this will basically work. If we then move down, we've got a function to start a web server. And as you can see here, this will receive information back from activity on the web page when we press the form buttons. So for example, if we press the forward button, it'll move the robot forward. And then after this is all defined, we go right down to the bottom. We finally actually do something because everything before here in the code is defining functions where it's going to open up the web connection, open up a socket, and then serve the web connection. 
So let's show you what happens when we actually run this code. Let's run it up there on that tiny little run button. There we are. We can see what's going on in the shell. Let's make the shell a little bit bigger. Currently waiting for a web connection. But there we are. It's now connected on the local IP address 192.168.1.102. So let's go across to uh, our web browser and over here. And I've already got that IP address in the address bar. So let's just go there. And there we are. We've got our nice little set of uh, form buttons. If we just... Uh, do that like that. We can see both that on the screen and also the shell in Thonny. So, for example, if I press forward here, it uh, gives us back the value forward, back, stop, left, right, etc. So we now have a means of sending information from a web browser on any computer on the local airway network across to the Pico, and we can use those commands to uh, control the robot once we've replaced these uh, print commands with something to control the robot. And so, with the web interface basically working, let's now turn our attention to the robot itself. So, here we have our Pololu Zumo, which is a kit I put together way back in 2014, and I'll provide a link to this in the video description. But basically, what we have here is a chassis with a battery holder underneath. If we just take off a little cover like that. The batteries go in here and this takes four AA cells and I'm going to be fitting four of these nickel metal hydride rechargeables. And we then find some contacts on the top up here as you can see which I've already soldered some wires to. Let's have a look previously. A switch and a wire has gone onto there so we can take the power from that. And if we take off the nuts and bolts here and as you can see, what I'm trying to do is to show you inside here, if I can get all these things out of the way. Come on, there we are. Let me have a look. There we are. Inside here, you can see we have two motors. And these are six volt micro metal gear motors. And note, if you buy a bare Zumo chassis as opposed to a complete robot kit, then no motors are included, so you can pick your own gear ratio. And these motors here are 6 volt with a 298 to 1 ratio, delivering 50 RPM at minimal load. Next, let's turn to the magic of our L298N, which is a classic H-bridge motor controller. And this has got two sets of terminals, one on either side, to connect to two motors. And it's also got six pins for motor control. The middle four pins are used to spin each motor either forwards or backwards and we'll be connecting these to four digital outputs on the Pico W. Meanwhile, the outer pins can be used for speed control as I demonstrated in the fourth part of my Pi Devastator robot series. However, in this video I'm not going to implement speed control so we'll leave on these jumpers. Finally, we've got a three terminal power block and if we turn this over, you can see the labels on it down there. And as you can see, it's got a ground rail in the middle, a 5 volt output and a voltage input, which is labeled 12 volts. However, 12 volts is actually a maximum input if you want to use the module's onboard voltage regulator to drive its logic circuits and to provide the 5 volt output, with the acceptable input range being 4.5 to 12 volts. And here the input will be from our four AA rechargeable cells, which will be about 4.8 volts. And it's important to note that to activate the onboard 5 volt regulator, there's a jumper that needs to be in position. And the jumper is just behind the power block, just down here. And with this in place, we should be able to power the Pico W from the 5 volt and ground rails on this power block. And this ought to work fine, even if the output from our batteries is no more than 4.8 volts. And this is because a Pico W has an onboard buck boost converter that accepts an input of between 1.8 and 5.5 volts, which it then converts to the 3.3 volts required by the Pico. So let's look at a wiring diagram, which shows exactly as I've just described, with the Pico's GP pins 18, 19, 20, and 21 connected to the motor control pins on the L298N, with the Pico also taking its power from the module. Oh, and if you're wondering where you can find these components, they're all listed in the Amazon.com Explaining Computers store in the Raspberry Pi and other SBC section, although of course you can buy these things from many different vendors. 
However, if you purchase anything via the EC Amazon store, it does help the channel as Amazon sends me some commission. Right, I've now implemented the wiring diagram as you can see for a test, although note I've not connected the wire from the 5 volt output on the L298N to the Pico W because right now the Pico W is connected via USB to the PC, so it'll be powered from the PC. Talking of which, here on the PC in Thony, I've written some motor test code, which first imports relevant libraries as you can see, and then we define pins 18, 19, 20, and 21 as outputs, and I've called them as you can see, motor A forward, motor A backwards, motor B forward, and motor B backwards, hopefully for obvious reasons. Next, I've defined five functions, the same five functions we defined in the last code to move forwards, backwards, stop, etc. But here they're not printing things out, they're actually controlling these pins. So, for example, to move forward, we turn both motors forward. To move backwards, we turn both motors backwards. To stop, we obviously turn everything off. To move left, we spin one motor one way and one the other. And to spin right, we do the opposite. And then after that, to check it all works, I first executed a move stop to make sure everything stopped. We then wait for two seconds, move forward for two seconds, move backward, left, right, and finally we print time for bed, said Zebedee, when hopefully everything has worked okay, and we do a final stop. So, let's see if this works. Very exciting. Let's uh, run the code, and hopefully after our two seconds, forward, backwards, one way, Tother. It's exciting, isn't it? It's more exciting than we've got any right to experience at this particular moment in time. Anyway, something even more exciting is sitting over here in Thony because over here I've got our final Zumo code, which is very similar to the code we started out with in the video, but of course with the, the motor code added in. And uh, what have we done? Well, I've added in import pin so we can control the pins here. And then after that, I put the pin definitions in, just as we saw in the last bit of code. And then after that, I put in exactly the same definitions for moving forward, backwards, etc., just as we had previously. And other than that, after those, I put in a move stop to make sure the motors are stopped as soon as possible, just in case the Pico booted with the pins in a random state and the motors start moving by themselves. After that, the code is absolutely identical to previously because, of course, what it did was to use the input from the web form buttons to move left, right, etc. And we've just redefined those functions. So let's execute this code. Even more exciting. There we go. Hopefully it'll try and connect. There it is waiting for its connection. Is it going to connect? There we are. It's connected on the uh, local IP address. So let's now open up our uh, web browser and go to that address. And there we are, and hopefully, forwards, backwards, spin left, and spin right. Yes, it's working. We are clicking on buttons on a web page to control the tracks of the uh, Zumo robot. Very exciting. So all that is working. All I've now got to do is to get the robot in one piece and operating independently. Greetings. Here I am back again with a final robot. It's very exciting. And earlier, when the Pico was still connected to the computer, I saved the code onto the Pico as main.py, so it'll auto-execute. And if you have problems getting back into that code, if you want to change it later, look at the instructions I've included in the video description. Anyway, as you can see, I've made a 3D printed bracket to uh, hold everything together. We've got the L298N on the back, the switch down here. And initially I struggled to figure out how to mount the Pico itself, given it's got headers on the base, and I wanted to be able to access the switch on the top and the USB connector. And so in the end I've done this, the Pico is not connected in at all, it just uh, drops into this little trough. And I use my friend's friction and gravity to hold it in place. I think that's okay. Anyway, let's turn on the switch like that, and you might be able to see the LED coming on on the L298N like that. Very exciting. So if we go across to the computer, here we are in the browser, and I'm going to hope the Pico is still on 
106. It looks like it is. There we are. And maybe in a future video, I'll add a display to the Pico so it displays its IP address. Anyway, I'm going to try driving this very carefully on the table. Can we go right spin? Yes, and a left spin. We can, I'll try a little bit of driving, but uh, I really don't want to go off the table here. This is a little bit dangerous, but uh, clearly this is working. It's working quite reasonably. But uh, I think what I'm going to do is to actually find a bit more space to uh, drive on and we'll uh, try with that. So I'll come back to you in a second. And here we are with a much larger driving surface actually safely on the floor. And as you can see, I brought up the interface to the robot on this seven inch tablet. So everything is completely mobile. And in theory, it still works. We can go forwards, backwards. That is fine. So let's now just also uh, come a bit more wide and give you a broader view of this, bit of wider area. Come on camera, come a little bit more. Oh, that'll be enough. Once we can do a proper test like this, forwards, spin all the way around and uh, back up that way. Oh, it's very exciting and spin that way and forwards. I'm getting the hang of this just about, maybe. But uh, the principle is obviously working. We're managing to control a robot over Wi-Fi and we're doing it from here, a tablet with a web interface. This is just what I intended to do at the start of the video. So here we are at the end of another video and the Pico W Zumo robot has come to say goodbye. Personally, I think it's turned out rather well, although inevitably there are opportunities to make improvements and to add extra functionality. And I strongly suspect I'll be returning to this robot in a future episode. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.